Welcome to Night 2, special edition of GKW Good Karma Wrestling. I'm Gabe Neitzel from ESPN Milwaukee. With me, as always, from ESPN 1000 in Chicago, he is Jonathan Hood. And live, yeah, we go to Jay Hood first, because Brian Rowitz gets last billing, because he is actually in Philadelphia. He witnessed live and in person, finishing his story, Cody Rhodes. That's where we start. It was an overbooked masterpiece, in my opinion, the way it ended. We knew he needed the Army. We didn't know who was going to be in the Army. Great crowd reactions for John Cena. And, of course, every time you hear the gong, every time you hear the bells of The Undertaker, it's always going to get everybody's attention, and that's what we got tonight, as he's the one who chokes slams the rock. He's the one who gets the final boss out of the way, clearing the deck for Cody Rhodes to finish his story against Roman Reigns. And don't forget, sealed also. You got the sealed entrance. So, okay. So, did since you mentioned the sealed entrance, I got to ask the question, because it was tough for me to hear on the television broadcast, Brian. Do they still have John Moxley's voice a part of it? Because the three of them said, you know, that's, they spelled it all out. It was hard for me to hear, and I didn't want to go back and, and double check. But I don't know if Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley's voice is still a part of that entrance. I cannot confirm or deny that. I have no idea. Like It sounded like the normal entrance when it hit. It was very confusing here live. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think we did hear the original entrance of The Shield. And I'm thinking... Did WWE sign Moxley? I didn't know about it. Is Moxley coming? <laughs> like, we know Rollins is there. Is Mox coming? Like, <laughs> anything could happen, right? As we talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks, it would take a lot for Cody Rhodes to win the Universal Championship. All the help possible. You got a Cena. You've got the Undertaker. And everybody tried to help as much as possible. And Cody Rhodes did it. And I, I tell you what. Guys, this is why we do this every week is because of the story. I mean, you can give me all your five-star classics. You can give me all your flippy shit. There's nothing like a great story that culminates into a great moment like we saw tonight at WrestleMania. Yeah, we talk a lot about feeling and having that feeling. Tonight you felt that. Like when that three came down and then when Cody gave the belt to Mama Rose, like you had that feeling. Cody is the master at doing that. And tonight was a masterpiece. There's no other way to put it. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, I know Hunter didn't want to come down, or I guess we're just calling him Paul Levesque as uh, as as CM Punk, um, you know, pointed out in his interview with Ariel Hawani this week that he leaves and everybody comes, he comes back and everyone's calling him Paul. And he's super confused as to which Paul, because he's thinking Paul Heyman, but he comes out and look, man, this is the first WrestleMania where he was fully in charge and man, knocked it out of the park. And he was getting his roses all over the place, got them from his wife to begin the night, um, certainly got them from Paul Heyman at the Hall of Fame on Friday nights. He deserves it all, man. I, like I, It was so much fun tonight. Um, we, we have discussed on this show how as diehard wrestling fans, the three of us, like WrestleMania hasn't become for us anymore. And we're still going to watch because they know they have us. But this actually felt like it was a WrestleMania for the wrestling fan, which which was a nice, refreshing, and look, it was still super fun. You catered it to the wrestling fan, and I think a lot of casual fans came along for the ride because of the Logan Pauls and, of course, The Rock being involved and all these other things that they were able to do and all the different eyeballs they've been able to get on the product over the last you know three, four months. It was it was a tremendous product tonight, and it was capped off the best way that they could. I know we talked about it last night. We were worried. We were nervous. So to answer Andy's question on YouTube, um, was there really any doubt? Yeah, there was a little bit of doubt. There was a little bit of doubt last night, but they ultimately pay it off with Cody finishing his story. Yes, there's always doubt because we kept hearing about, well, if it's not now, then Madison Square Garden later on this year. And I just poo-pooed all that because I said, the time is now. If Cody Rhodes did not finish his story tonight, then the audience would not believe in him. And as you tell the stories, as you flip through the pages of every bit of the story, Brian, you had to tell that story tonight. I mean, you did it last year. He did not uh, finish the story. Tonight, it had to happen. Because if it didn't happen tonight, then they would have to move on. Because no one would believe in Cody Rhodes as heavyweight champion. I just, I'm just, um, just so overwhelmed by the story because Cody Rhodes is a decent man. It's just a good man, right? 
and he bet on himself. He was that stardust, awful character, had to bet on himself, go to the indies, start, help start AEW, and said, you know what, it's not time for me to, to leave the territory and find a new goal. He finds a new goal, comes to WWE, and we thought there's no way that Vince would allow Cody Rhodes to be the champion because he didn't let Dusty be the champion. He didn't let Goldust be the champion. But it actually happened for Cody Rhodes, a guy who bet on himself and now is the king of the business in the WWE, which is well, it was amazing. And, and to that point, I didn't know if there was going to be a way that Paul was going to let him be champion. Because the first thing that Cody Rhodes did when he started AEW is he took a sledgehammer to a throne that looked very familiar to most wrestling fans. But they were able to put that behind them. I know Cody's made a couple of jokes about that along the way in his journey back here to WWE. But you, you think about, and, and that is the thing that they did, is they encompassed everything, especially in the video package leading into it. They encompassed everything. This wasn't just... Cody Rhodes, to your point, Shea Hood, this wasn't just a Cody Rhodes since he's come back to WWE a couple of WrestleManias ago to wrestle Seth Rollins. The, the Cody Rhodes finishing the story, which we know is actually not finished because it's professional wrestling and they've got a Raw tomorrow night. But when, when you start encompassing the entire story, the entire story is dashing Cody Rhodes. It is Stardust. It is him in gold dust beating the shield and being like that. That all is encompassed in the entire Cody Rhodes story that was completed tonight. I mean, they showed the Bucks on the Jumbotron. Like they showed it as part of the story. And like it almost got a gasp here in Philly. Like, wait a minute, we know those guys. And it's funny because, like, I'll be the first to admit, like this past year, it felt unnecessary. This could have been done last year, but that feeling tonight, I think, was because we had to wait that much longer. And I think in the end, they ultimately got it right. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. Um, this whole weekend is about the new era of WWE, and it was solidified by uh, Triple H's wife, Stephanie. Uh, we saw her at the Hall of Fame, had no idea she was going to come out night two, and pretty much just solidify for everybody, yes, we're still together, and yes, I do believe in my husband, and yes, indeed, this is the new era. My dad reigned supreme of, over professional wrestling for 40-plus years, but this is my husband's era. If nothing solidifies it more than that, I can't tell you what it is. It's one thing for Triple H to do all the interviews, but when Stephanie says it, now you just know that everybody buys in to what is a brand-new era in WWE, led by Cody Rhodes. And it, I mean, they kind of, as it, as it happens in professional wrestling, they were able to take – advantage of because i mean a year ago we didn't know that this was going to be really the first vince free wrestlemania but it feels it, you know, again it like you said, it kind of comes full circle of yes it is a new era let's start this new era with a brand new universal champion or whatever they're going to just wwe champion whatever we're going to call it going forward i know cody has hinted that maybe he wants to make a couple of changes with the championship belt we'll see if that ends up happening on the raw after wrestlemania but it just it does feel, again, it just feels great. Like the, the actual emotion, even though you, you figured it was probably going to happen. Um, the second I saw Brandy walk out with him on the stage during his entrance, it's like, okay, this actually is going to happen tonight. Brandy's there. She's backstage. Um, and of course, she was the first one in the ring uh, to celebrate with Cody. Like, yeah, it just, it feels right that, okay, let's start this new era and let's start this new era with a new champ. And I think all those little touches also, like Brandy, when she came out, like there was a pop for her and like she had such a smile where it's like, oh, like they do know who I am. And to your point about the belt, do we get the winged eagle tomorrow? Is that next? Uh, I don't know about tomorrow, but I think that since Cody already mentioned it, maybe he reveals that on the Today Show tomorrow morning. Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, there, there was, but I mean, that's all part of the change, right? It's all part of the era. Um, as far as the match is concerned, guys, with Cody and Roman, it's, you know, this thing was back and forth. I'm like, we're going to get some interference at some point, right? It's kind of like these guys put on a nice show before all the interference, before the Usos, before Solo Sokoa, before Cena, before The Undertaker. Uh, it was already a, a pretty good match back and forth. One of the funny parts is, is Roman Reigns trying the crossroads, executing the crossroads and says, oh, this thing, you can't beat anybody with this thing. I just was just trying it out. <laughs> he was, he's trying to beat Cody with his own finisher. I just thought that that was funny. But, um, you know, as we celebrate Cody, uh, you love the match, but we got to give Roman his flowers for this for this reign because, no, this is not the reign of Hogan and Bruno and these guys that were, 
you know, up, up and down the roads every night, 300 times a year. But Roman, along with his bloodline, made this reign very, very compelling and very interesting. And so now he's no longer the champion. But hats off to Roman because everything he's gone through with leukemia, all he's gone through by, you know, holding on to the championship, having this reign, it's been pretty cool. But now it's time to turn the page. Is that the last time we see Roman Reigns as a champ in WWE? Yes. Mm. Find out. Find out Thursday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, literally, just a question, as you mentioned, because like we, I mean, he he has talked about you know, um, you know, again, he's slowing down and he wants to make sure he has time with his family. He talked about in the press conference last night because it was a story that had kind of come up. I think because Pat McAfee had mentioned something during the broadcast last night about yeah, he he has to take an oral you know chemotherapy drug to to keep his leukemia in remission, and obviously that's something that was. That, that prevented him from being with WWE early in the Thunderdome era because he wanted to be safe. He wanted to make sure because of that. And it's, you know, it, it, it just makes me wonder. I mean, if if that's the last time we see him as a champion, he is, I mean, nine times a main eventer of WrestleMania. And again, it's, it's funny because everybody pushed against him so early when he was main eventing some of those earlier WrestleManias. And we felt like he was being forced down our throat and it just took the right presentation. And this was the right presentation. Him as this badass heel with Paul Heyman by his side and the rest of his family by his side. It was, if, if this is it for the blood, I mean, th there's still going to be some blow up from the bloodline. I still firmly believe we're going to get rock Roman here at some point, but I mean, that's, that, that kind of feels like the after log, you know, that, that kind of feels like postscript the bloodline storyline is probably the best professional wrestling story of the last 20 years. Yeah, I agree with that. And to your point about the different presentation, I was at the media in Orlando where it was Roman Taker and the reaction of that crowd versus the reaction of tonight when it's Roman and Cody, uh, to say it night and day would be a little bit of an understatement. Like that's when he was being forced down and everyone didn't really want to see Taker anymore. So like to see that and to see that tonight, I was like, oh, this is different and this is significantly better. I mean, you think about all the baby faces that we grew up watching, you know, you know, from the Hogan's to, to the Stings, the Ultimate Warriors and Brett and Sean and just like on and on and on of the great baby faces that we've seen. Cody Rhodes is just so different from all the rest of those guys. He's just, he just is. He's different from the other those guys. Here's a guy that's, a, first of all, a fan of wrestling. He's a second generation wrestler. And, you know, do you think that he does things spectacularly? No. He's not, he's not one of these guys that does anything spectacular. He's just very solid, and he's got a big personality and is real. When he was on Good Karma Wrestling, you can go to the archives and check out the interview we did with Cody Rhodes. Cody was just he was just a, a decent human, who had just a regular guy that loves the business um, and a big part of it. You know, um, you just didn't think that a Rhodes would ever be on top under Vince. Not, not like that. Because of whatever Vince's issue was with Dusty Rhodes back in the day. And just to see Cody Rhodes in this spot, Gabe, it's just, uh, you know, as, as Rock says, like, hold on to his forearm goosebumps, goosebumps for him. Because it's just great. And, and it, it solidifies something else, guys. The WWE for years has been a baby face territory. And I feel like Triple H has gone back to where it has been before. Baby face territory with the champion on top. Um, is just the cherry on the on the on top of the Sunday tonight. It really is. This has to be a record for title changes in one WrestleMania weekend, right? I mean, we had so they had two tag team championships, both changed hands. Uh, we had the 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 heavyweight championship change hands twice. Uh, the women's championship tonight changed hands. Uh, Universal men's championship changed hands. In IC championship changed hands. It's seven. Am I missing any? That's seven championship changes over the last two days. Yeah, that's that. You know what that means? New era. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have had your reign for a while. Okay, time to turn it over, right? I mean, tonight we got a chance to see uh, Bailey win the championship. We we saw that coming. It's it's Bailey's time. EO Sky had a nice run with the championship, but ends up being this is the best match EO Sky's had as a champion. You know, and, without a doubt, and not even close, by the way. Not I even mean, close. And yeah. it was so damn good. 
she's got all these tag teams of six mans, and then she has the best match she has in a loss. But it was Bailey's time though, and so Bailey is is a full fledged baby face now. She wins. That was a feel good moment. So a lot of these title changes were just feel good moments, like that whole Bailey win. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it felt like this was quite possibly one of the most predictable, I guess. I, I don't think I saw um, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller coming out as tag team champs. Definitely saw Miz, everything they did with Miz and R-Truth. Like, I think you saw them, especially then once Michael Cole was hinting that they were probably going to be splitting the tag team championships. Like, other than that, I think it was largely predictable, but the storytelling was so good. It didn't matter. It was, you know, it, it was so damn good and you enjoyed it anyway, even though you kind of knew going in what was going to happen. And again, it caps off tonight with Cody. Like, yeah, you probably knew. And especially after Taker came in, but you couldn't help but feel those goosebumps. You couldn't help but feel that, that just wave of emotion for Cody as he won the championship. Well, even the cash in, I feel like we alluded that we thought there would be a cash in. We were hopeful there'd be a cash in and like it got that reaction and like that was still awesome. And that was a good match. Like, yeah, like obvious work sometimes in pro wrestling. I, I know it should go without saying, but obvious does work at times. And tonight was an example of that. No, you're, you're absolutely right about that, Brian, because you know what that is, is actually giving the audience what they want. You know, we'll, we'll get a lot of the discourse online tonight into tomorrow. Like, it's so predictable. We knew it was going to happen. I knew that there was going to be a cat. Okay, but you know what? You still had to see the execution of it. And you still had to see it before your very eyes. Imagine this, a wrestling company giving you exactly what you want. For, you know, and, and because before, it's a swerve, bro. Or before that, now, Rhodes on the biggest stage, he doesn't win. Sami Zayn, no, he doesn't win. Drew McIntyre, no, on the big stage, he doesn't win. No, no, we just keep pushing these guys down, pushing these guys down. And now you're in an era now, at least on the surface, where the audience wants certain change, and they got it, for the most part, at WrestleMania this weekend. I mean, think about the biggest movies ever out there, and I think we've kind of alluded how, and I think Cody's, the beginning of Cody's entrance today was certainly, I think, an allusion to the Avengers in Endgame. Like, at the end of it, guess what? Thanos was going to lose. I knew that. I still paid my money. I still sat down in the theater those a couple of years ago, and I enjoyed the hell out of that movie, even though I knew what the ending was going to be. It, it's about the journey to get to that ending, and it seems like Triple H understands that more than most right now and understands it's about those stories that get you to that ending more than necessarily the ending itself. So, Sammy, is Tony Stark in your story there? Um. <laughs> I mean, he's still alive, so... Yeah, but he's not as a world champion anymore. I feel like those dreams are dead. <laughs> oh, come on. You still got to believe. Come on, man. Your guy won the IC championship, ended the reign of the longest IC champion of all time, and you've thrown in the, the towel on Sami Zayn, world champ. It, I still think it can happen for Sami next year at Mania. Well, hopefully. Well, yeah. that's the other thing. Like, you talk about Roman being a champion. We can still get to Roman Rock next year, and with the title doesn't need to be involved. Like, I feel like Roman's still main events Mania next year. Yeah, there's some resentment probably from Roman that The Rock did not come through or came down too late or something like that. That match could happen to SummerSlam. Very well good, you know. And I still think that there's still more to come with this bloodline. It's not going to be intact as is, but you can just tell more Samoans are coming. The legacy can continue with this, even with Paul Heyman. Heyman can still be out there for the bloodline if Roman's going to take a step back. So I think that you can still continue with this. Um, there's more Samoans coming. That that's what I I've been telling you guys that for six months. I feel like there's more. I expected more out there for the chaos. I was looking for a, a haku. I was waiting for a haku with the, like the little the little thrust right to the throat. I was waiting for a rakishi to come through the side door. I I wanted everybody to come out there to help. But um, yeah, it it was great. The um, the cash in we just talked about by the way with Damian Priest. So as I told you guys, I did not. I did not want Drew McIntyre to have a short reign. I just thought for a guy that's been looking for the championship, is doing his best work, he has a championship, he's emotional. I'm thinking, okay, they're going to go with this until CM Punk interferes. Now, here's a hurt Punk, Gabe. Now, hang on a second. I thought that he was 100%. He was good enough to be able to get that brace and, and take it to Drew McIntyre in order for Damian Priest to cash in. Damian Priest is the World Heavyweight Champion. It's crazy. But again, it's the subtle storytelling that they did within this that made it make sense. Because the story that they were telling was, Seth, you're too distracted. I'm coming after you. 
But the last few weeks, who has been the actual distracted one? It's been Drew McIntyre and his obsession with CM Punk. So CM, again, takes off the brace, puts it in his good arm, beats the hell out of him, leaves him there for somebody to be able to come down and, and Damian Priest to cash in. Again, it's just little subtle storytelling that make the cash in make sense, that make Drew McIntyre, and, and they they dragged it out, right? They were able to drag it out. So Drew got his moment. He got to, to soak it in with the fans. He got to have the moment with his wife before he decided, I'm going to be distracted again and go and rub it in CM Punk's face. And it make it all makes sense because it's not just thrown together. It's, it's able to kind of come together and be a complete story, which is why I was more than okay with Damian Priest being the one who's holding the heavyweight championship at the end of the night. Well, even to your point about the little storytelling, like this CM Punk pettiness, where he's just sort of okay with that happening in front of him, like, ah, shucks, like you just lost your belt, like as opposed to some random booking where, you know, he tries to take out Priest or whatever. He's just like, eh, sucks for you, buddy. Yeah, so, so Brian, you could be our eyes for this. So obviously, if Drew McIntyre loses his championship the way he did against Damian Priest and knows that uh, CM Punk did it, what was the aftermath? Did Punk leave first? Did he go up the ramp? Did Mac McIntyre leave first? Because if that happens to me and I get uh, I get effed by CM Punk, okay, I'm going after Punk. So what happened there? So literally what they do, the match ends, and then they go to the next video package, they darken everything. They turn all the lights off. So like you don't see everyone exit. It's like, oh, end scene. Like It's like you're at a play, basically. They, they bring the curtain out. That's what they've been doing. Oh man, you can't you can't screw me out of the World Boy Championship. I kiss my wife, I'm happy, and all of a sudden I lose the championship and it's like, okay, next thing. No, I'm gonna go after punk. That's what I wanna do. I'm pissed. Also, Brian, I know you didn't you were because you're there. But CM Punk not knowing that that was Drew McIntyre's wife in the front row, he's like, Oh, and he's kissing someone. Oh, <laughs> There's there's some love in the city of brotherly love. Like Punk was just lost on commentary. Hell of a tweet though. Great job by Drew on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't see that when he had grabbed the wife from his phone and was sending it, he sent out a tweet that said "bored at work." LOL. When he was interacting with the crowd, that was absolutely fantastic. And happy, um, and happy for Priest, Gabe. Happy for Priest. Now, again, another guy's done some great work. Holding on that briefcase, almost a rib, has to go to every time with that thing, that briefcase, and now being able to cash it in. Uh, this Judgment Day is light years away from when Edge had it. Light years away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They've all grown up now. They've all grown up, except for Dirty Dom. He still hasn't grown up. He's still no. trying to pick fights with his dad. But, you know, some things are never going to change there. And even tonight, like, I was not expecting anything out of LA Night AJ Styles. In fact, we joked about how that was the one match that we could probably leave off of WrestleMania because we weren't fans of the build. The match delivered, man. Like, that was probably, you want to talk about EO Sky's best match as champion? That was probably LA Knight's best match in WWE. Yeah, I, I, I said, uh, tweeted on GKW underscore wrestling. I said, here's a couple of guys that needed extra juice for this because it was just two guys brawling. It was right, right at Browitz's feet, by the way. They were brawling right <laughs> Yep. In Philadelphia, right? That's on our YouTube page. I mean, we, he's got exclusive footage right there in front of him, L.A. Knight and J.J. Styles. But they, it's almost like they probably went to Triple H and said, can we do some extra stuff? I mean, I know that we are going to have this match, but we need a little something extra. So they just kept adding on and adding on layers to it, telling the story. And it was get, when he got in the ring, we should have been surprised. Two veterans. I was surprised at the finish. But, I mean, but L.A. Knight is a guy that's over and uh, – you know, it didn't hurt AJ Styles at all. And so, you know, good for them to come up with something to drum up interest and then have a good match afterwards. And it's funny because in the past, when we see those sort of like shoot fighty matches, like I think like the Ronda Shayna or like Mox and Brock, like that stuff doesn't work. Like those guys made it work. And, you know, AJ looks a little different right now physically. And I think that adds to it also. And I'm like, curious to see where he goes from here. But it was good. I mean, LA Knight a little out of place at the end of the night. With yeah, the I was going to ask. Yeah, but, that was know, still a good job well, to get a win. 
why, why was LA Knight out there for the celebration? Like everybody else, yeah. I could make sense. Like Sammy, KO, very well documented. Boys with, with Cody Rhodes. Obviously, Cody has a history with Randy. C, uh, uh, CM Punk has a history with Cody as well. Though I also think that CM Punk walking to the center stage, holding up John Cena's hand was a little bit of a shot at Tony Khan and AEW. Of course I do. But I digress. Um, uh, John Cena being out there makes sense. Cody's family being out there makes it. And then there's just LA Knight wandering around like, yeah, I'm just out here. I'm just a baby face hanging out with all the other baby faces. What's going on, guys? It felt like when Steve Buscemi's in 30 Rock and shows up at the high school. Hello, fellow kids. Just hello, <laughs> fellow baby faces. What yes. am I supposed to do? Yes. They emptied out the, the baby face locker room. He was still around. He's like, yeah, I'll come out there. Sure. <laughs> He no, lost to him also. You know, remember yeah. that memorable match? I got no real connection to it, but, you know, I'll just be out there. Why not? Why not? I'll be part of the scene. Who wouldn't want to be? If I was a preliminary bum in the back, I'd try to sneak myself out there. Hello. <laughs> I'd be out there, too. Just be part of the fray, just to help, just to say, hey, we're celebrating. I mean, so uh, so good for L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles. Good, solid veteran match. Uh, anything else, Brian, that you noticed for tonight? We're going to save a lot of our other thoughts on WrestleMania as a whole. GKW coming up at Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. But anything else that we missed um, with you being on site? I mean, the other one I'll throw out there for, you know, tonight, the U.S. title. I mean, Logan Paul delivers again. Good job by the crowd shout, uh, chanting for Gatorade and how much they love water. But yeah. the three of them was a lot of fun. Orton with that RKO early. Like, we knew that match would deliver, and they did what they had to do. Yeah, uh, Logan Paul uh, has been able to master this wrestling thing sonically. So it is amazing how a, a neophyte in the business can be this smooth in the ring. That's not supposed to happen. That is making old schoolers pull their hair out. Like, how, how is this guy this good? Has he been in the business 20 years? No. Has he been there 10 years? No. Five years? No. He's just that good, Gabe. And so this match is what we thought it would be. Um, KO and Randy Orton fighting one another. And then uh, Logan Paul getting spots in there. And I just think Logan Paul is amazing. And it's not just the, the move set that he has, because that's spectacular. Like, I, I, I don't want to sell that short. But it's also the facial expressions. It's the move, like, he just gets it, right? Like, he knows how to tell the story. He knows how to be the cocky a-hole. And he just knows how to sell the whole thing. He The, the facial expressions, the whole nine yards, it's it's... He just gets it on a different level that, again, usually takes like, – Roman Reigns didn't get that right away. Like, Roman Reigns does a lot of those things now, a decade into his career, as the tribal chief, as the universal champion, and Logan Paul's doing it, like, two years into his career. It's it's unbelievable how smart he is and how much he just absolutely gets it. And he's very good at making us feel old when he rolls out a new friend every single pay-per-view match. <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't know who these influencers are. Like, I, like I'm looking them up as as we speak. Like, trying to figure out who these guys are. Like, I mean, Michael Cole's got it in his notes. It's not like he knows these guys offhand. But Pat McAfee knows these guys. But I'm like, who are these influencers? Who are these people? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all I, I know, it was I a it you. was a fun night. It was a fun WrestleMania. Like both both nights. Like WrestleMania had gotten to the point. In the last 10 years, I think maybe WrestleMania 30 or 31 was the last one that was really, the fat was trimmed and it was a tight show. And then it just got bloating, bloating, bloating. It was just a long night, a slog at times. And then they split it into two nights. And there were still times where it felt long. Neither of these nights felt long. Every, the action was quick. I was locked into every match. Even the matches I didn't think I would be interested in ended up being great. Like to me, WrestleMania 40 kicking off the area of Paul Levesque is going to go down as one of my favorites in, in recent memory, for sure. Yes. And by the way, for those that are asking in the chat, can I just tell you something? There had to be something that um, in which there was a disconnect between the WWE and Steve Austin, in which he could not be there. Steve Austin did not ruin Re WrestleMania for me, okay? Steve Austin wasn't there. Okay, guess what? WrestleMania was still a success. So, so I mean... Steve Austin obviously had a, some had a maybe a scheduling glitch or there was a disconnect between the two where he could not appear. It's okay. I, I got I, here's what I got. I got the I got the Usos. I got Solo Sokoa. I got John Cena. I got the Undertaker, and I got Cody finishing the story. And somehow I can still enjoy it without Steve Austin being there. So it's okay that he wasn't there. It's okay. 
And it's funny because in the past when we had those rumors that everyone just starts to believe are true, like we see that sort of hijack the show and like there'd be chance and disappointment because you had so much like, yes, everyone's like, oh, I wish I would have seen them, but it didn't ruin anything. No, I, I, it's okay to be surprised at The Undertaker, who we thought was completely done, that we'd never see him again. The gong hits, and all of a sudden he comes out of nowhere, right? I, <laughs> like, I'll if I if you don't mind, I'll enjoy that in, instead of the high problem. You know what? This would have been perfect if they just would have had Stone Cold Steve. It was fine without him. It was just fine. Yeah, I mean, whatever. If Stone Cold shows up, what, it becomes a 11 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10? Like, I mean, at some point, we don't need to be greedy about hearing the glass shatter. I'm sure we will hear at least one more time in our lives the glass shatter and Stone Cold come down and raise some hell somewhere else. This guy right here, this guy right here, Brian Rhodes, he's the MVP of Good Karma Wrestling. And Without as, a doubt. As we celebrate our anniversary, our second anniversary which I forgot because when we had our, what, 100th episode, I thought that was the anniversary. I, thought, <laughs> I forgot that we started at WrestleMania last year. I go, we're two years old. We are. But <laughs> at our anniversary. Thank God for Facebook memories. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I had no idea. But Brian Rowitz is the MVP because he's been all over Philadelphia. It's all over YouTube. Everywhere that he's been, every nook and cranny, 10 different shows that he covered. Uh, and so... Brian, we give you all the praise for being able to cover this in Philadelphia. The polo works, by the way. The the ESPN West Palm <laughs> polo uh, works because he was able to talk to so many WWE superstars and, and everybody else in between. So thank you for your coverage. No, good times. I think, you know, the indie shows, it's the fun part where I enjoy all those other shows. Now I actually got to enjoy Mania also this year. So ready to go home. I have an early flight actually in a few hours. So that'll be fun. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Again, If check out all the great work that Brian put into this weekend. Um, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Check it all out on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Good Karma Wrestling. Again, a ton of great work. Not just, or, of course, we did a recap last night. We have this recap, but a lot of other things that Brian did while he was in Philadelphia. So check all of that out. Subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Good Karma Wrestling. We'll give more complete thoughts. Coming up on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you, WrestleMania 40.